the 502. That's with Arizona. He's won 72% of the time, and he won the national championship in 1997. Our Kia Sara game plan. All right, let's look at this Marquette transition defense, a big factor. This Arizona team, they are a blur. And then the bigs have got to play big. Merritt, Novak, Jackson, Sanders. For Arizona, we're down. Diener, you're going to see a lot of different defenders go at Travis Diener. And Arizona has got to do a good job of controlling the defensive glass so they can get out in that bonded fast break. We are at the McHale Center with Marquette 6 and 0. Oh. Arizona is 3 and 1. The only loss is to Florida, 78-77. Since that time, they've beaten St. Louis and had an excellent victory over Texas, 91-83 at Madison Square Garden earlier this week. Marquette's recent victories against Grambling and before that, Notre Dame, and they were impressive beating Notre Dame by 13 points. Big and deep Marquette. Small and fast Arizona. Give you an idea of Hassan Adams' his hops. is quick off his feet. He's jumping center against 6'10". Scott Merritt, Adams, 6'4". And wins the tip. How about that? He has a better than 40-inch vertical leap. It is Mustafa Shakur at the point. He's the true freshman from Philadelphia. And a blocking foul will be called against Marquette. Got Merritt on the pick and roll. Now, Marquette loves to do this. They call it blitzing the pick and roll. They'll send that big guy. He'll jump out at the guard. He doesn't want him to dribble in a straight line. He wants him to veer a little bit to his left when he's going left like that. But Merritt, not in position, draws the foul. Adams very quick to the hoop, and he may have traveled. Yes, he did. It's the first turnover on Arizona. They had 17 turnovers in their victory over Texas earlier this week. Lou Olson wants better. And Arizona, Arizona, they've got to get out and run because the half-court defense of Marquette is just superb. They are holding opponents to just under 30%, 36% field goal percentage. They do a great job helping out. They don't give you easy driving lanes to the basket. Travis Diener for three. He's a big game player. First round of the NCAA tournament hit 29 points against Holy Cross and then came back against Missouri and hit 26. I was called. Go back, draws the offensive foul. But look at the range of Travis Diener. He has hit now 17 of 31 of those three-point attempts, about 54%. So he can knock down that shot. You got to check up. You got to get in his chest, make him put the basketball on the floor if you're Salim Stoudemire. Mustafa Shakur picked up the foul his first. Drawing a charge. Steve Novak does a nice job on penetration, stepping in, giving up the body. Marquette, they have an award for that. It's called the Hit the Deck Award. Joe Chapman won it last year. But all these guys, Steve, they will buff the mahogany. And carrying the basketball is Scott Merritt, a turnover by the Marquette Golden Eagles. He thought it was an interesting matchup as Green saw Iguodala matched up on his point guard, Travis Diener. Yeah, and, and Diener, again, you've got to get up on him. You've got to make him a penetrator. And another good matchup, this Merritt. Fry matchup because Merritt can put the ball on the floor. Tom Crean is going to pull him out away from the basket, try and use some of his ball handling ability against Channing Fry. Fry, big guy, doesn't like to play that far out of the perimeter. Iguodala loses it. That is the second turnover or third by Arizona in the first minute and a half. And when Arizona played St. Louis, Arizona won the game by one point, but St. Louis did a good job of limiting transition baskets. They sent all five guys back. They didn't attack the offensive glass at all, but they made Arizona have to execute half court. That's not one of the strengths of this Wildcat team. Steve Novak can shoot the three, misses here. Shakur with the rebound. He had eight rebounds in the victory over Texas. And here is Iguodala, left hand does not go. Chapman rebounds. Marquette wants to run. Diener with the pull up. He hits. You better check up. Hassan Adams has, is the tendency to do naturally. Fluffs back into the paint to protect penetration, but Travis Diener, again, he came into this game, hit a 16 to 33 point shot, now he's 18 for 32. How do you like my math, Steve? It is awesome. I'm ciphering like Jethro. You're a college <laughs> graduate. <laughs> Here's Channing Fry going outside for two points. And he can do that. Channing Fry, he can step out, knock down medium range jump shots. He's really improved that area of his game. <laughs> Stoudemire now moves over on Diener. Chapman from the corner. Good. Just great execution offensively. A little dribble hand up after Diener. His penetration was halted. Nice job, Chapman, finding the open area, coming to get the basketball. Channing Fry, left hand, no. 
rebounding is Marquette. Marquette right now controlling the tempo of the game. That's extremely important against a speed club like Arizona. Chapman had an opening. And the Arizona fans thought he traveled. Had an opening, picked up his dribble, didn't know that he had that lane to the basket, could have drove, got something good, a foul, a possible shot attempt. Scott Merritt, and they are hot. Four for five as Marquette to start this game. Like a well-oiled machine, and they've got a playbook about two inches thick offensively. They've got a lot of different sets, and give Tom Crean their coach credit. He knows what matchups to milk early. He went to Merritt inside, got two points. And the ball thrown away. That's the fourth turnover by Arizona in the first three and a half minutes of this game. Dare I, Steve? Dare I? Here's Diener. Defense backs off. Diener. Yaka. That first yaka <laughs> of 2003. And then Merritt with a little yaka of his own. Nice job extending up and over against the defensive player inside. Just sound offensive principles displayed so far by Marquette. Well, you win 80. You shoot 80% from the floor. You're going to win a lot of games, and that's what they're shooting right now to start this game. An eight-point lead in the number nine team in the nation. Chapman. Another three goes, and it's a 13-2 Marquette lead. And this is what they did to Notre Dame. Yeah, it was, and just executed beautifully on offense. And then again, Arizona hasn't had an opportunity to run because no, because uh, Marquette is not missing any shots here early. Look Five for six. Adams. Four, three. That's the one area of Hassan Adams' game. People thought maybe the weakest part is outside shooting, but he has worked diligently on that. And we talked uh, yesterday, Hassan and I, and it's all about confidence with him. He doesn't miss jumpers in the summertime, but then kind of locks up when it gets for real. But he's trying to shoot with more confidence. Keener finally misses. Shakur wants to push it, looks for an opening, kicks it off right side, Iguodala. Fry will be doubled. Somebody's got to be open, and that man is Hassan Adams. It will be a foul call on Marquette. Now, if you're Arizona, you're going to have to knock down some outside shots. This half-court defense of Marquette is just tough to penetrate. But here's another guy, Joe Chapman, that can knock down outside shots. Here, three-point line, Joe Chapman, nothing but yak of Steve. College basketball presented by Kiyosara Marquette leading Arizona 13 to 5 at the McHale Center in Tucson. We've got great college basketball coming up for you. The ACC, it's a doubleheader with the Pepperdine Waves in Maryland to take on the Terrapins. Portland then will take on number four, Duke. And Chris Duhon, that's tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Maryland earlier beat the number one team in the nation. And Florida lost again today. They went down against Louisville. UConn might move up to number one, but how's Missouri doing? They play Gonzaga right now. Gonna be a tough game for the Tigers. Gonzaga, Roni Chiriop doing a great job. Blake Steph, the point guard. But now Arizona's got to do a good job of trying to penetrate this tough now zone defense for Marquette. Stoudemire's got you want to shoot the outside shot. Channing Fry loses the basketball after rebounding the Stoudemire miss. After he was swapped by Terry Sanders with the block inside. Good interior defense by Sanders. Novak misses his second three of the game. Shakur, a great first step. Throws it away, stolen by Novak. That's the fifth turnover by Arizona. Poor job by the Wildcats taking care of the ball. I mean, this is great half-court defense by Marquette, but some of these passing decisions extremely questionable. Boy, this is early that Shakur comes out of the game and they bring in Chris Rogers. Shakur had an excellent game against Texas. Rogers did not with four turnovers. But Chris is a wonderful defender. And as a matter of fact, there were many times last year, Lute Olsen said he was the best defender on the Arizona team. And yeah, brings a tenacity to the floor. Chris Rogers out of Portland, Oregon. And a little bit more experience can maybe, possibly, hopefully for Lute Olsen do a better job taking care of the basketball. Now, another one of the myriad of sets that Tom Green and the Warriors will run. Arizona in a zone defense. And, and Marquette will run their man-to-man -man offense against zone defenses. Chapman misses the three. Fry high for the rebound. Iguodala right side. Once again, Marquette back in transition defense. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Hassan Adams with his second three. And when you look back last year, that was anything but his game. Nice arc on the back.
basketball, great release, great form by Hassan Adams. You can tell he's put in some work, and you know, he, he incorporates that element into his game. He's going to be virtually unstoppable because he is just a terror on the offensive glass and in the paint. Iguodala on Novak. Marquette misses. Iguodala chases it down in the corner. Rodgers pushes it. Looks for an opening. Drives and scores! Nice play. Rodgers weaving his way to the basket. Transition D was back. He just made a nice play off the dribble. Chris Rodgers. 8 nothing run by Arizona. And Marquette got the guys that they really don't want shooting jumper Sanders. Merritt, they have got to get the ball in Diener's hands, let him settle him down a little bit. Marquette with the wraparound. Or either find Sanders inside. That's where you want Sanders to do his damage in the paint, offensive glass, take the occasional jump shot, but not make a steady diet of it. Because Marquette certainly has the size advantage with two 6'10s and a 6'8 on the floor. Here's Channing Fry pulling it up, it will go. Sometimes Channing Fry gets lost because of the great transition attack of Arizona. And, and all the athleticism of Iguodala and Adams, Salim Stoudemire's outside shooting it. Cannot forget about Channing Frye. He's a force inside. Novak sinks the three outside. And it's interesting, Marcus, you should say that because Mustafa Shakur brought it up in practice yesterday and threw it to Channing Fry when he was running down the middle. And Luke stopped practice and said, Mustafa, you wait. Wait for Channing to post up. You don't want to give the guy, the big guy, the ball in an area where he is really not comfortable doing what he likes to do with Channing Fry. That's down in the paint. Even though he can step out and hit step deep foot, he can't really put it on the floor. But an advantage merit now against Stoudemire inside. Good double by Channing Fry. Steve Novak. Four, yeah. three. But, but good ex exploitation of the double. Defense kind of sucked in the paint because of that mismatch. And Novak just kind of roams the perimeter looking for the open area. And they find him. And he shoots it. And it shoots it extremely well. Six for nine from three-point range is Marquette. Down low Channing Fry. Merritt defending Fry. Spins that baseline and may have walked. Yes, he did. That is the seventh turnover in the first eight minutes of this game. Novak getting hot from outside. It's Marquette, 21-12. Mark hit by nine over Arizona, and even though they're bigger than Arizona, they can really stretch the Cats' defense. Oh, man, they can tickle the swine right there, Travis Diener, a couple of pull-ups to get the cut from deep. Everybody gets into the act. Joe Chapman from, from out front, the big guy, Steve Novak. They say he's having a tough time shooting the ball this year from outside. He's only hitting 36% of his three-point tries. They can really do a good job of stretching your defense by knocking down those outside jumpers. Five for nine from three-point range, and you see what Tom Crean has done at Marquette. It's hard to believe that you look at the Conference USA preseason polls, and a lot of guys picking them third, fourth in Conference USA, and the way they play, they look like they could repeat as champions. Yeah, well, it, the, the loss of Dwayne Wade, uh, picked in the lottery by the Miami Heat as, after his junior year, they thought that that would be maybe a bit too much for Marquette to overcome to win that conference, but they've got some talent left. The cupboard is not bare. Jackson rebounds, Deaners miss. This is where they will hurt Arizona. They have too much size inside. Fry works the rebound. Stoudemire brings it across the timeline. And we have a whistle and a foul, and it looks like it will go against Karan Bradley, who just came into the game, the 5'11 sophomore from Katy, Texas. When you talk about Marquette, they won the Conference USA title last year, but a lot of people are picking Cincinnati, Charlotte, and Louisville, who beat number one Florida today. Uh, Rick Pacino's got that Louisville team playing extremely well. But for Marquette, Bradley on the floor to assist in the ball handling duties, duties take a little bit of the pressure off of Travis Dina, who's got to play and will play long minutes. Fry has to save it. He does. 15 on the shot clock. Shakur against Diener. He'll pull up with the three. In and out. Iguodala ripped the rebound. I think the foul should go against Novak. And yes, it will. Steve Novak picks up personal foul number one. Marquette a lot bigger. But Arizona, Iguodala, to be safe, active, can get himself into good offensive rebounding position. And that's one of the areas Lute Olsen wanted him to improve on as the season progresses. He's a great defensive rebounder but uh, because he can get it off the glass and leave the fast break. Stoudemire out top to Fry. 
Arizona down nine. Fry trying to post up, but very strong defense by Marcus Jackson. Iguodala, no, and a foul. Don't want to do that. You don't want to shoot an out, foul an outside shooter that deep, especially Andre Iguodala, make him prove himself before you close out that aggressively. And that is another edge that Arizona might have over Marquette. They shoot 75% from the free throw line, and Tom Crean's Golden Eagles shoot 67.5%. That surprises me because Marquette has such good shooters. Iguodala, 6'6 six, six sophomore from Springfield, Illinois. This is a guy who signed with Arkansas out of high school, but when Nolan Richardson was let go, he changed his mind and signed with Arizona. Boy, Lute Olson is glad he did, particularly after the loss of upperclassmen who were forwards last year and Rick Anderson and Luke Walton. Yeah, two tough guys to replace. Throw, just throw Jason Gardner into the mix and you know, it's losing an awful lot, but it gives you an idea of just how well Lute is able to develop and, 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 and locate talent that can fit into his system. Shakur has come in here and played some, some solid minutes as a freshman. Arizona man-to-man. -man. Marquette, they want to spread the floor, a little pick and roll. Arizona's going to switch any kind of dribble handoff between the three smaller players, Roger Stoudemire and Shakur out top. Mason's got to think about shooting with five in the shot clock. It is in and out, and it's tapped out to Shakur. Stoudemire. Yes! A beautiful setup by Masasa Shakur, the freshman point guard out of Philly. Penetrate. Pitch it back, Salim. All he had to do was step into it and knock down about a 26-footer. That's all he had to do. Lute Olson thought that might have been a charge as he pushed off, but Diener gets the call and the score, and here's Chris Rogers outside. He misses. The ball pumped out deep. Rogers fights for it, but it's won by Todd Townsend. Stoudemire hits the long jumper. Diener comes right back. That's the toughness of Travis Diener. Quiets the crowd with a tough shot of his own. Who did Diener remind Olson of? The gray Oregon point guard. Ah, yeah, Lou Lou <laughs> Drew Blake there for a minute. But here's Secure going to run for watch it penetrate right. Pitch it back. Step right into it. Right in shooting motion. Stoudemire knocks down the long three-point shot. That was a long three-pointer. So Dina reminds me of several plays. He's got a little Mark Price in him, a little uh, John Stockton, a little Luke Rittenauer. Fast with the basketball. A little bit more consistent, I think, from the, from the outside on his jump shot. I mean, he's shooting 54% from the three-point line than, uh, than Luke Rittenauer. Luke, Luke may be a little bit faster with the basketball, better penetrator. Diener's on the sideline now, and Brandon Bell is at the court. And that ball is tipped in by Channing Fry. I said the Marquette Bigs had to play big, and you can't allow Arizona to exploit the offensive glass. Merritt, no back. I've got to do a better job laying some wood and rebounding the basketball. Arizona by three. And that's unusual with the size advantage to Marquette. Block shot by Fry. Channing Fry's done an outstanding job on Scott Merritt. I haven't called his name a whole lot. He hasn't done a whole lot. A lot of it's due to the defense of Channing Fry. We're taking the challenge. With Diener out, Brandon Bell's running the point, and they do not look as fluid. Bell with a first shot. Transition. Better get Support. back. Diener at some point. And Brandon Bell trying to do the best that he can. The younger brother of Charlie Bell from the Michigan State great. Look at this defense. That's what Arizona did against Texas in that second half. They cranked up the D tonight. Passing lane. Pressured the basketball. Scott Merritt scores inside the three-point arc. And here comes Arizona the other way. Chris Rogers will drive. Fry trying to post up on Merritt. Damian Mason will defend Stoudemire. Salute Stoudemire for three. Talking about a quick release. Catch and shoot. Salim Stoudemire, a nice job behind the screen. Mason had no chance to bottom the shot. You got to go back to Merritt in this lineup. No Diener on the floor. Merritt can use his ball handling to try and take Fry off the dribble. 
Novak also has got uh, about a six-inch height advantage down in the post if he chooses to use it. They call a reaching foul on Mustafa Shakur. And Lou Dolson was concerned about that. He wants no reaching fouls this year because of the lack of depth. But he has to be pleased with this defense. Scott Merritt, get that out of here. And this is what happens. It leads to an easy layup at the other end. Mustafa, the chosen one with the layup and then Salim. You've got to be aware. He'll knock it down all day long from long range. Stoudemire with the jump up. Here's Sarah College Basketball. Shows Marquette with a one-point lead on Arizona. This week on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, we sent Keyshawn Johnson to Cincinnati to find out how the Bengals have gone from laughing stock to playoff contender in three months. Plus, our Howie Long talks to the Colts to see if this is the year that Indy makes a run at the Super Bowl. It's all on the Ford F-150 Fox NFL pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox. Channing Fry, the lone big postman that has experience that Lute Olsen can go to because of the injury to Isaiah Fox. Well, Fox out for the year, scored some meniscus in the game against I think, Florida. Defense again. And the steal by Iguodala. Dump. Yes! Activity. Andre Iguodala, nice job on on Novak, about 40 feet away from the basket. You don't want to put Novak in that position, although he's an outstanding standstill jump shooter. You don't want him have to have to create off the dribble. There is a whistle and a foul called. It is against Marquette. Tom Green has Travis Diener back in the game for Brandon Bell. And this Marquette lapsed for the side of a Diener being out, but here's Andre Iguodala. Nice job on the steal, and he just explodes in the cup. He's got some tremendous athleticism. Sophomore out of Springfield, Illinois. And Arizona has their first lead of the game as the Wildcats now out shooting Marquette, who started so hot, hitting five of their six, first six from the floor. Marquette a bit of a zone defense. Nice rebound, Terry Sanders. Trying to force the Wildcats to hit some outside shots. Chapman, short, fried. Here comes the run. Adams right side. Charge on Hassan Adams. That's Joe Chapman. He shot the air ball, hustled back. This is why he won the Hit the Deck Award last year. Great job of retreating back on D. Great defensive position. Feet are set. Great job of taking the hit inside. And picks up the foul on Hassan Adams. And not a good decision by Hassan. I was going to say, what should he have done in that situation? Uh, he's going like one against three. He needs to pull it out. And a lot of times, you know, athletically, you think you see something and you try and exploit it, but then. Just a great play by Chapman to take the hit. You need to be a little bit more conservative. Oh, that's a goal tap by Channing Frye. Olsen will also take out Mustafa Shakur and bring back in Chris Rogers. So he has Fry, Adams, Iguodala, Stoudemire, and Rogers in the floor. And sometimes that's okay. I mean, you don't mind that just in terms of sending a message to Merritt and showing him and flaunting the athleticism if you're Channing Fry. But, you know, it's pretty much one and done. You do it one time, don't do it again. Marquette has Townsend, Chapman, Diener. Merritt and Sanders on the floor. And Marquette extending their pressure, a little 2-2-1, full court pressure. Not trying to steal the basketball, but well, they did steal it in, in the half court. Nice job, Chapman. Ninth turnover by Arizona. Diener with plenty of time, still 22 in the shot clock, so he'll reset the offense. Adams defending Diener. Now the switch has Iguodala at 6-7 covering. Yeah, Iguodala, good foot speed defensively. It's going to be tough for Diener to beat him off the dribble and get an open shot. Todd Townsend outside misses Iguodala with those long arms. May have traveled. Yes, he did. Ten turnovers for Arizona. Lou Olson is hot. These are conference USA officials, but they're three good ones. Hey, check it out. Gonzaga has beaten Mizzou in overtime. So another unbeaten falls. OT, and Gonzaga was down in that game by six points with about three minutes to go. Never count. Mark these guys out. Rony Turi out. Corey Violet. Blake Stepp has took Arizona. Deep, deep, deep. And should have beaten him. Blake Stepp missed that shot toward the end. 
Sanders is fouled. And you wonder about this. If all the energy they used up in that game against Gonzaga last year cost them when they later had to play Kansas University, a fast run team. But man, this Arizona team, I mean, they're small. And people talk about well, Hassan Adams is playing the power four spot, that they don't have the rebounding to do damage. But Jabby Wood used to always talk about taking quickness over size seven days a week. It causes so much problems on the basketball floor. And we will be honoring Coach Wood next week when we have Michigan State at Pauley Pavilion and UCLA. The great coach John Wood, Marcus Johnson, won a national championship with him. Fry has it, kicks it out, Rogers, wide open three, no. And a whistle and a foul will be called. And it gets, I think, a merit for holding the jersey of Channing Fry on his block out. And, and no, no, it was a second foul for merit, but just no excuse for that. He had good position, he had him sealed. You know, don't, don't add the little extra, extracurricular stuff in there by grabbing the jersey. That's an obvious foul call. You wonder if... Tom Cream will get Scott Merritt out of the game before he picks up his third personal foul here in the first half. Arizona is not very deep. Tom Crean can go deep with Merritt, Jackson, Sanders, Steve Novak, all over six feet, eight inches tall. You think that would be the move to get uh, Merritt out of there. You do not want him to pick up that foul unless you're, you know, you're Tom Crean, you know your players, you know your personnel, and you have a lot of confidence that he's going to make some wise decisions defensively. I wouldn't leave it up to Merritt. I'd get him on the bench. Four and a half minutes left. Hassan Adams defending. Diener with the fade. It's long, and it's out of bounds. It'll be Arizona basketball last touch by Damian Mason. Now you see the problem presented to Travis Diener. Hassan Adams, a very good, long, quick defensive player, had him out here on the right wing. He penetrates Salim Stoudemire, very quick-footed defender, picks him up on the baseline, forces Diener into a tough shot. That's what I talked about at the outset, just uh, seeing a lot of different defenders and really trying to get into his head with some different looks and some pressure defense. Novak comes back in the game, but not for Scott Merritt. Channing Fry will now leave, so Arizona will really go small, although they're bringing in the true freshman, Kirk Walters. Scott Merritt has got to be careful not to pick up that third foul, which will really handcuff him and his effectiveness in the second half. And if you're Arizona, maybe look to kind of go at Merritt when you get the opportunity. This is the guy that Lou Olson needs. Salim Stoudemire, one of the great shooters in college basketball. And he's hit three big threes in this game. Great shooters and great clutch shooters are hitting big shots at important times. Out of bounds, it should be Marquette's basketball. And yes, last touch by Chris Rogers. Talking about his shooting, Salim Stoudemire, yeah, got deep from the corner. You better check him. College basketball presented by Kiyosara, Arizona by two here in the first half. Next Saturday, a couple of great ones meet, Michigan State and UCLA. That is a 6.30 Eastern time, 3.30 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Michigan State led by Chris Hill, UCLA with Cedric Bozeman and Dejon Thompson. You talk about the Spartans' tough journey. Oh, man. Batan, Death Mars, Kansas, Duke, Oklahoma, Kentucky, UCLA, Syracuse. I mean, that's one of the tougher non-conference schedules that you will ever see. And you've got to wonder just how the confidence of the Spartans will, will stand, can withstand that tough of a schedule. Remember when Arizona had that monster schedule, but then Lou Olson thought he would return Richard Jefferson and Michael Wright. They left early for the NBA, and he was going, uh-oh, what's going to happen? And they had like 10 top 10 non-conference opponents, and they almost beat them all. Marquette with the basketball, down by two, three and a half to play. First half, Rodgers on Diener. Traveling. The shot clock was down to zero. Marcus Jackson, I hurt his ankle, his left ankle in September playing pickup ball. Didn't participate in their individual drill, so he's a little, real rusty, not sharp with his post-up stuff. It gives him a lot of hustle, a lot of rebounding, but not the kind of guy you want to finish off a play. Only the fifth turnover for Mar Marquette. Arizona has ten. 
So Marquette back to man to man. Arizona's got to recognize and try and use their advantage, which has been, which has been Celine Sotomayor's outside shooting. Turnovers now for Arizona. It's Rogers with the travel. And that's just uh, being tentative with the basketball, not certain what you want to do. The play was to penetrate left for Rogers and then try and find Celine Stoudemire kind of drifted back behind him, but Rogers got himself in just a little too deep. The quarterback, Travis Diener, from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Goodrich High School fires the three and hits. And Rodgers got to decide what he's going to do. He didn't get any help on that screen. His teammate has got to show, help him out. As Diener comes off that pick, Diener will shoot open all game long. There's the third foul on Scott Merritt as the freshman yeah. forced him to commit the foul. Here's Diener. And then you see Rodgers there. Just a look of frustration as he gets no help whatsoever after the screen by Marcus Jackson. And Diener is too good of an outside shooter to defensively play that pick and roll the way they're playing it. But Merritt, the third foul, the gamble didn't pay off for Tom Crean. I thought he should have gotten him out of there after number two was picked up. So Merritt will take a seat. And Merritt is the guy that was defending Channing Fry. So Fry, let's see how he does the last 251 if Arizona tries to go inside. Kirk Walters will miss the front end of the one and one. It's rebounded by Steve Novak. This is an opportunity for Novak on the floor to be aggressive offensively with Merritt on the bench. You know, Dina's going to have the ball in his hands. He's the primary offensive option you're looking at. But Novak would have to be number two with this unit. Diener misses the three. Chapman gets it back. I'll tell you, Marcus, I'm really impressed with how both coaches have come back with teams. I mean, Marquette after losing Dwayne Wade and Robert Jackson, Arizona after losing Jason Gardner, Rick Anderson, and Luke Walton. These are quality teams right back. And the characteristic that is similar with both teams is both play hard and both are extremely well prepared. They know what you're going to run before you know it. Chapman misses, dry rebound. Chapman keeps his pivot for almost pulled it. Stoudemire. That's the wrong dude to leave open on the wing, see? In transition, you got to get to him first. The fourth three-pointer by Celine Stoudemire this half. But it all starts with defense. Chapman tries to penetrate. There's the long arm of the long chatting fry. Doesn't block it, just bothers it. And then in transition, where is the D? Here's Diener, but he's way too late to leave. He's on fire. Yaka knocks down that wide open shot and does it with a positive attitude. Coming up on our Kiyosara College Halftime Show, we'll be taking a look at Michigan State and UCLA as they will meet on Fox Sports Net next week. The upsets of number one. And number one went down again today. Florida lost to Louisville. Highlights of this game as well. Salim Stoudemire, what a player he was at Portland Lake Oswego High School, Oregon's all-time scoring leader, 2,219 points, comes from a brilliant basketball family. I mean, he averaged 28 points a game as a freshman in high school, so... <laughs> that is Yaka. He came out the gate <laughs> shooting it. He is a shooter extraordinaire and has a lot of confidence in his shot and is, is playing with more confidence this year. A better attitude. Sanders inside has a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. Or, excuse me, Marcus Jackson. Marcus Jackson. Yeah, I mean, Marquette, just a bunch of 6 240 240-pound guys inside, and Jackson, nice step through. Contact doesn't bother him whatsoever. I, I, I like watching him play. He's junior college transfer, originally signed with Georgia, was let out of that letter. Just a nice pickup by Marquette. I mean, once he developed some offensive skills down on the post like he showed on that move, his hustle, his intensity, I mean, he's going to be a real plus for Tom Crane. Golden Eagles go back up by one. Down low fry. Oh, misses the dunk after a great pass from Iguodala. Be sure of it, Channing. You got to be sure of it. Don't try and uh, do something before you get the ball firm in your grasp. Look at Dean. I mean, I have no idea how he wiggled his way through that defense and still have time to find an open man. And Channing Fry trying to punctuate it, just kind of loses the handle right at the last moment. And the way this game is, and as tight as it is, they may need those two points. Sanders, left hand goes. Nice find, Joe Chapman inside. And the big people, Jackson Sanders, starting to contribute offensively down on the box with Merritt on the bench. Rodgers with the fade. 
Is he trying to do too much? Walters will knock it out of bounds. Yeah, he made up his mind way too early. I mean, as soon as he got it on the wing, he's like, I'm going to put it on the floor, two dribbles, get to the paint, and shoot my fade away. But a lot of other things developed as the defense collapsed on him that he didn't recognize. There were some open shooters. And the way Stoudemire is going right now, you know, he's got to be the guy you kind of focus in on if you're the point guard for Arizona. And what he had done was suck Stoudemire's defender into him and then shot it anyway. And that's your Portland homeboy. Come on, Chris, give it up. <laughs> yeah. Mark get hot outside, and they push the lead back to six. Steve Novak with three threes in this game. Maybe time for you to do something we didn't know. Merritt was not effective on the floor. Sanders, Jackson, now Novak have been effective offensively. So you're not risk really missing Scott Merritt at this stage of the game. And Arizona forcing the last two shots, allowing Marquette to open on eight-nothing run. And they've actually played pretty well. They were better with Scott Merritt on the bench. Sanders, Jackson, two inside buckets. Novak, you know he could knock down the outside shot. Iguodala went for the steal. Novak picks it up and makes it in beautifully. <laughs> it's a buzzer. What a shot by Steve Novak. Novak aware of the time on the clock, just under five seconds as Diener spins back. As the ball is loose, he's just going to get it, and just a nice job to gather and, and find that angle on the backboard for the soft little sweet back shot finish. We'll be back with our Kiyosara halftime report here from Tucson. It's Marquette by eight over number nine, Arizona. Question. Pac-10 College Basketball on Fox Sports Net is presented by Kiyosara, the new value frontier. Brought to you in part by New Gillette Sensor 3 and by Subway. Good so you don't always have to be. It's the College Basketball Saturday presented by Kiyosara here at the McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona. 41-33 impressive Golden Eagles on the road and our Bank of America higher standards. Marcus, I know you wanted to talk about the success that both coaches brought to the programs early in their careers. Uh, and you look at what Tom Green has done, it's been remarkable the first four years with the team. Got his team into a couple of NCAA tournaments, that Final Four, his fourth year. Lou Olson, no slouch himself, he did a terrific job, probably a bigger hole to dig himself out of when he took over here in Arizona, but three NCAA tournaments in his first four year, Final Four in his fifth year. So Green is slightly ahead of the Lou Olson turn the program around curve but he had tradition to build on with that Al McGuire yeah. national championship in 1977 and Lute Olsen came to the desert when it was basically dust and he built a power here Hassan Adams he'll need more from the boards one of the keys to their success against Texas I remember Lute Olsen telling his guards you've got to get more long rebounds their three backcourt players only had four rebounds in the first half they had 24 in the game against Texas well, when you're undersized as the Wildcats are it becomes a collective effort and against Texas also they picked up their defensive intensity and led the transition baskets they outscored the Longhorns 16 to 6 to open up that second half and get the momentum of that game back in their favor but you can't do it like that Steve. Steve Novak opens with a three it's a 13 nothing run going back to the first half for Marquette and they're back up by 11. You can't lose contact with the big fella he shoots it too nicely. Hassan Adams misses. Stoudemire tried for his first rebound of the game and we have a timeout called by Arizona. But that was textbook blockout by Marquette. As after Novak knocks down this shot, Yaka deep corner, bury it. You gotta get up on him. The Pac-10 tournament returns next March. An automatic bid to the Big Dance is on the line as the men's tourney returns to Staples Center. Oh, up. While the women do battle at HP Pavilion in San Jose, this is your chance to be a part of the madness. Come ball, wait up. For tickets, log on to www.pack-10.org or call Ticketmaster. Pedal, optional. Need for Speed Underground. Rated everyone. Now on Nintendo GameCube. Hey guys, meet the new guy. Hey. Hi, I'm Bob Holtkamp. Hey. Hi. 
help yourself to some snacks. Speaking of which, you know what would taste good about now? Yeah, a big, hot and juicy cheeseburger. With everything. I can almost taste it. Telling me, if there are places to get a hamburger that good this late, I'd not only drive, I'd buy. Really? Wendy's classic hamburgers are made fresh, so they're always hot and juicy, so you can eat great even late. You must be the new guy. Yeah, thanks. Wendy's, it's better here. Merry Mug, Merry Mug, smooth as double free. Hug this mug, no pull, no tug. Reflex action key. Oh! Merry Mug, Merry Mug, smooth as smooth can be. Give your guy a real go. Shave some clothes as smooth can be. Welcome back to the McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona. Marquette by 11 over Arizona. And let's go back to last year when Marquette went 27 and 6, won the Conference USA regular season, and went to the Final Four. Great season for Tom Crean and the Golden Eagles. Diener was just on fire. Average 27 points a game after the first two tournament games to get him into the Final Four. Dwayne Wade, no back, was on fire from the outside. And Crean has embraced the legacy and tradition of Al McGuire. That's what I like about his program. He's not running from it, he's embracing it. He's got Bo Ellis as one of his assistant coaches, and he was one of the stars of that 77 national championship team. Butch Lee and Jimmy Boylan and Jerome Whitehead. What a team. Tom McGuire called Bo Ellis the secretary of college sports. Stoudemire, a charge, and Arizona continues to struggle out of the break. When you penetrate, you have to keep an eye open for defensive players stepping in your path. Now, Salim is on fire from the outside, tries to penetrate as the defender plays it from the outside shot, but there's Steve Novak doing what this Marquette team does so effectively, take offensive fouls. They're not afraid to give up the body. Novak has the basketball, missed his first nice two play. shots, made his next five. And now with a fine pass inside to Merritt. And Arizona a little confused as they make another foul or second in the last 20 seconds. Great, great execution. Merritt's going to bring him high, plant, go back door as he's overplayed by Hassan Adams, draws the foul inside. But that's just great reaction basketball. That's how you coach it. Somebody overplays you, you go back door. And great delivery of that pass from Steve Novak out there. I mean, Arizona's got to do that. They've got to overplay passing lanes, try and get some steals, try and get themselves back in this game. And if you're Tom Feen and Marquette, then you start relying on your pressure release plays that you work on in practice. Merritt makes them both. He's playing with three fouls, and Scott Merritt now with eight points. Mustafa Shakur brings it up the floor. Keener will control it. Iguodala. No. Another great block out that time by Marquette, especially Diener on Stoudemire. Man, that ball could have hit the floor before an Arizona player could have touched it. Stoudemire still does not have a rebound in this game, and Diener has been the guy blocking him out. No back. He can really rip it. I thought he should have ripped that one. He kind of had an opening there on Iguodala. A traveling violation against Scott Merritt. He's just glad it wasn't his fourth foul because he gave a little of his shoulder into Channing Frye's chest. And the Wildcats need to get in sync offensively to that end. Luke Olsen's going to run some motion offense, get some movement from his guys, get this defensive Marquette kind of scrambling, kind of moving outside. A whistle and a foul. And is that against Steve Novak? Novak. This is his second personal foul, so Merritt has three, Novak has two, the only two in foul difficulty for Arizona. Mustafa Shakur with two, and Hassan Adams with two. Well, I would look for more of that one. When Iguodala gets matched up against Novak outside of whoever Novak is guarding. Put it on the floor, try and penetrate, get to the rack yourself, or kick it out to an outside shooter, preferably Salim Stoudemire. Stoudemire with the jumper. He's got 14 now. He's been the go-to guy. He's got to ride that horse, Steve. <laughs> he's shooting the ball extremely well. Everything he's throwing up there is going in. Get him some shots. Gainer starting the backcourt. Great drive to the hoop, and he will score. He floated that high off the glass over Channing Fry. And showed me a lot in the process. You know, I thought maybe you make Gainer finish inside and stay home on the other offensive players, but he did a nice job with the fade and the finding the bank angle. Brian misses. It seems like Arizona panicking a bit, and here's Sanders at the other end with the slam. This is a very well-coached, well-prepared Marquette basketball team. They are stifling Arizona in their half-court offense. A 15-point Marquette lead. And there are no easy shots.
shots to be had. There are no driving lanes to penetrate. And right now, Arizona having to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Tough to do against a tough half-court defense, especially with the health principles that Marquette is employing in this game. Adams will score. He's been very quiet after his career-best 30-point performance against Texas. Only eight for Hassan Adams. You get the feeling that Arizona's going to come back. They have to do it on this end of the floor. And you got to stay with Novak. You've got to get to the shooters, and you've got to stop the Diener penetration. on Merritt. That's 6'10", and that's the fourth foul on Scott Merritt. He saw he had the size mismatch, so he took on 6'4", Adams, and charged right into it. Well, you got to be careful with the back downs in college basketball because, you know, not a lot of contact, a lot of flopping on the part of Hassan Adams, but I give him credit. you got a big guy in foul trouble. As soon as there's any kind of contact, you make up the official's mind for him. Well, let's write that down. 16, 10 to play. Here comes Arizona. Merritt went out with four fouls. Salim Stoudemire continues with the hot hand. And again, that's secure. I like secure because he finds Stoudemire anytime he penetrates. He's got that Stoudemire third eye where he's looking for Salim. Steve Novak for three. Will this guy ever miss? He's made six in a row, and he's tied his career best for three-pointers with five in one game. He was in a shooting slump to start the season. He still shot about 37, 38% from the three-point line. He's out of that slump now. Salim Stoudemire. The junior leader for Arizona must bring his team back. He scored 17 against Texas. All 17 came in the second half. He may have to have one of those second 20s. And played a stellar defensive game against the Longhorns, too. He's matched up a lot against Sid Mill Harris, a great outside shooter for Texas, who, who got nary an open look with Salim playing deep. But that's the kind of shooter that Stoudemire is. And he gets hot and uh, everything, medium range, drops to the basket, long range jump shot. And Marcus, he's a guy who's extremely tough on himself. And Lou Olson loves the fact that he's a perfectionist, but wants him to just not get so down on himself when he misses a couple of shots. He will brood. I mean, he'll get on the bench and, and, and put his head down, and Luda's taking him out of the game as soon as he does show any signs of a negative attitude. But here's Dina, nice little crossover dribble behind the back, and then watch the fade from the shot blocker. That skill's right there. And then Sander, he can do this. Throw it down, baby. Loot. Where's my transition defense? Where's the foul? Marquette trying to spoil a wildcat day here in the desert. How about Steve Novak shooting? Yakka. Yakka. <laughs> What is the definition of yaka? Well, that's about time you asked. Uh, here's Marcus's third unabridged dictionary. <laughs> yaka, it's the amplified sound of the basketball cleanly going through the hoop, Steve. It's like a loud version of swish. It's a loud swish. Yaka! So if you <laughs> put it up to volume level 11, which is one higher than 10, you hear yaka. Eardrum breaking yaka! <laughs> and Novak has got a bunch of yaka in him tonight. Six straight shots Novak has made. Marquette is up, and here's Diener. That's the first rebound in the game by Salim Stoudemire. And that was Klang, as opposed to Yaka, that's Klang. That's when the ball misses off the rim. Stoudemire tripped up, and, and, and a nice job, Marquette. They realize that Stoudemire is knocking down everything he throws up, so they're going to put a little bit more pressure on him on the perimeter and try to limit his clean looks at the basket. Stoudemire will take the basketball out of bounds. Adams, Channing Fry, Stoudemire, Iguodala, and Mustafa Shakur. And just a well-scouted inbounds play by Marquette. They had Fry on the lob, but Novak pressured the inbounds passer. Didn't give him a clean look. Adams gets fouled running the baseline. No, he stepped on the end line and turns it over. The 13th turnover for Arizona. I'm telling you, it's nowhere to go. I mean, the, the help defensive principles of Marquette. Sanders, Diener, Bradley on the floor with Marcus Jackson and Steve Novak. Marcus Jackson, nice job hustling, hitting the offensive glass, scored a basket on the and one, nice little up and under move. He'll get his opportunity with Merritt with the four fouls. 
Karan Badley misses Jackson rebound. This is where Arizona really misses Isaiah Fox. One more big man at 6'9", 270 would help. I'll take you deep. 22 for Salim Stoudemire. You fall asleep just for a moment. He's burning you. Now the crowd into it. Stoudemire is defending Sanders inside. Hassan happens on Jackson. Marquette has got the count the offensive glass. Novak finally misses after making six in a row. Basketball's out of bounds to the Wildcats. Stoudemire stepping up big time, Steven. Got little Kaywin Bradley defending. Kaywin Bradley can low in his crouch. He's small anyway. And Stoudemire, get off me, little man. Get off me, little guy. Salim's feeling it. Six for seven from three-point range. Remember that game he had at Kansas last year? Yeah. 32 points and, what, about 21 of them in the second half? And he's that kind of streaky shooter. And Bradley's got his hands full. He's trying to deny him the basketball. Iguodala for a three. Iguodala, 500 jumpers a day will allow you to do that. Knock down three-point shots when it counts. Timeout, Marquette. Back-to-back, -back, Stoudemire, Iguodala, and Arizona's back in this game. You know, you're going to back off Iguodala because he's not known to be an outstanding outside shooter. But again, this summer, 500 jumpers every day, most of them long range. The form looks better. He shoots with a lot more confidence. You used to tell me the difference between a great shooter and a good shooter, about 200 practice shots extra a day. Next weekend is an early season showdown between two of college basketball's most historic programs when 21st ranked Michigan State battles UCLA as Ender Conference Power Square Off. Coverage of Pac-10 basketball presented by Kiyosara continues next Saturday at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific only on Fox Sports Net. And you'll want to join us for that one because John Wooden will be on the great UCLA coach. Well, there is a man that Arizona's missing. Isaiah Fox, an absolute monster inside at 6'9", 270 pounds. They will miss him this year. Yeah, I mean, he can shake things up. You know, Marquette with the decided height advantage because of Fox and him not being able to play this year. It's going to hurt Arizona some. At the half, my goodness, look at that. 49-43, Kentucky leading Michigan State. Sparks may suffer their fourth loss of the year. Out of about 80,000 people. Back east. Well, Marquette might be flying right by them because Marquette unbeaten. If they can beat Arizona, they may jump up all the way to the top 10 because this is a top 10 quality team. And that's despite losing Dwayne Wade and Robert Jackson. Deron Bradley misses, rebounding Marquette. Now they're hurting Arizona on the boards. Just out quicking the quicker Wildcats to the basketball. And Marcus Jackson, the JT transfer, can do that. He just hustles all out. He plays great defense on the inside. Gives up his body. Spread the floor. Let Dina do his job. Dina with the fame. Oh, he's a beauty. Spread it and let Dina go to work. I mean, he wants the ball. And I try and force him to go left. Uh, not that it, it doesn't shoot the jumper as efficiently going left as he does going to his right. Iguodala. No. Tipped up and in by Channing Fry. Great effort. Channing Fry over the backs of two Marquette big people. Jackson Sanders inside. Didn't show any quit on that play. Now Stoudemire. He gets a shot at Travis Diener out top. Stoudemire probably the best defender. Gainer has had his way with just about every single Arizona Wildcat who's defended him. And then Arizona, Arizona switching the pick and roll. They're not going to give Diener anything clean to look at. Rod Bradley misses. Iguodala takes it from Novak. Stoudemire. He hits. Time for the lead. What else can he do? Stopping Diener on the defensive end and then hitting one more three. 25 for Salim. A foul is called on Stoudemire. This is the attitude that Lute has been fighting Stoudemire to try and get rid of on that bad call by the official. A perceived bad call. About two feet behind the three-point line. Nice job. Long-range jumper Stoudemire. 
I mean, you know, this is almost NBA range three-pointer, and he's got that, especially when he's into a flow, into a groove like he is right now. And so he, get into, he gets into the latitude with the official. What happens? Luke takes him out, has some words for him, and that frown, that's exactly what Luke does not want to see. So he brings in Chris Rogers, and he takes out Stoudemire, who just picked up his third personal foul when Stoudemire was in his groove. Chapman. Nice move by Chapman. And Chapman's going to have a settling influence. Tomorrow Bradley took a couple of forces, but there's Jackson. I mean, just getting in the way. Now, this is what Arizona talked about at practice yesterday. You don't want to over-penetrate. Shakir does. He commits the turnover. Time out of the floor, and Luke will bring Stoudemire back in when we come back. Some maniacs here at the McHale Center in Tucson, Arizona, crawling back at Salim Stoudemire in the groove. Yeah, 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 that's a long lane there. I mean, look, you know, that's a long jump shot, but you got to put a hand in his face and be aware because he is just absolutely in fuego. Seven for eight from long range. Eight of ten overall. And where would they be without him? I mean, Channing Fry only has nine. Iguodala only with seven. And Adams only with eight points. Our Bank of America higher standards. Look at the guards under Lute Olson. I mean, the, this is why point guards come to play for him. I mean, look at Kerr, Reeves, Stoudemire, Gary, Simon, Bibby, Jason Terry, Gardner, who just graduated. Gilbert Arenas played the off-guard spot. Not a runt in the litter. Oh. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, if you're a point guard, why wouldn't you want to play for Ludo? That's a foul. No back. And then you get the big guy out of his comfort zone. Then it's like, see, give me the basketball. I'm the point guard. But here's no back on Stoudemire. A little bit of a push with that left arm. If he wouldn't have extended, he may have gotten away with it. But great job by Stoudemire gambling with the three fouls defensively. Stoudemire, well covered by Townsend this time. He's got three on him. He forced it. And it's an offensive foul. The fourth foul. Salim Stoudemire and Lute Olsen is furious. Well, that's, uh, that's good defense. I mean, you know, they did a nice job, first of all, switching on the screen and then cutting off the baseline. There's a switch, there's a cutoff, and Stoudemire has nowhere to go. I mean, Jackson right there, I mean, that's about the fourth time that Jackson has thrown his body into the fray. So now Arizona must try and come back without their star player. Salim Stoudemire, Chris Rogers comes in. He is a guy who can rip it outside, but certainly does not have the confidence or the groove right now that is experienced by Salim Stoudemire. Nice job by Marquette in their press break offense. If Arizona extends in the 2-2-1 two -two pressure, but you know who's going to wind up with it. It's going to be Diener with the ball in his hands. Rogers covering up on Jackson. Here's Diener. Beautiful pass inside. The dunk is missed by Townsend. Shakur. Iguodala. Again, 500 jumper today during the summertime. The jumper, the form looks so much better. So not a great three-point shooter starting out the season, but he'll get better and better as his confidence rises in that shot. A two-pointer for Iguodala, nine points. Diener inside the Townsend. They've got Rodgers on Diener. And denying Diener all over the floor. Chris Rodgers taking up the challenge. I'm not going to let you catch it. Make somebody else make Townsend or Chapman initiate the offense. Shot clock is at seven. Diener. Oh, what a oh. player! Oh. In your face! Oh, big guy! Shannon Fry, seven footer. Oh. It's great to see the big stars rise to the occasion. We've seen that from Stoudemire. We've seen that from Diener today in Tucson. And Diener, I mean, you know, that's about a 28 footer. You saw the shot clock winding down. That's about the the best shot you're going to get in that situation and to be able to knock it down with a 6'11 guy in your face shows the incredible gutsiness of Travis Dina from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. You grabbed your heart on that shot. I love plays like that. I love guys who just have that dagger mentality. He is special. And this is why a lot of people say he will be Conference USA MVP at the end of the season. 18 points, 8 assists, and gutsy play throughout this contest. Big shots, big passes. Got a couple uncles that are coaches and cousins playing D1 basketball. He's been a competitor all his life. He's had to be.
Adams knocks the miss by Diener out of bounds, and Marquette will get it with a new shot clock. You know, ask Diener, what was it like playing against Dwayne Wade? When, when Wade would de deem up, did he have trouble scoring? And he kind of blushed, you know, like, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it did a lot about confidence being able to score against him, but I love going against him every day in practice last year. It had to help him. Speaking of their practices, I mean, they, they run as crisp and as well-organized, disciplined of practice as you'll see, Steve. You, Look at that passing inside. That's Fry winds up with the block. When they inbound, will be seven seconds. No, they say it went off a Marquette Golden Eagle. Yeah, it looked like the block. Then off the head of, of Jackson inside. Here's a nice pass interior. Jackson going to shoot and then didn't get it. It's going to be tough to see at that angle, but the official right on top of the play. But now Arizona, they've got to execute. No Stoudemire in the lineup. Who's going to take the weight? He has a career best now with three three-pointers. And you see the rotation, the form, the release on that shot. There's a young man, Hassan Adams. I saw from Westchester High School in Los Angeles put him to work on his outside shot. California High School Basketball Player of the Year two seasons ago. Rodgers continues his great defense on Diener. There's a rip. Here comes Shakur. Iguodala right side. Yes! You see the little hesitation, the fake pass off the dribble, throws the defender just enough for Shakur to get there. That's why Mustafa, he is next in a long line of great point guards here at Arizona. Diener gets it to Novak, but not quickly enough. Sanders pulls it inside, misses the shot. Iguodala with the rebound. You get the sense the tide is turning. Defense picking up for Arizona. Adams misses. Jack, there is a timeout. Point. Jackson, it, gets, it goes on the floor for it. Presence of mind to call the timeout to keep the possession. I mean, look at this jump shot. Play. When I'm watching Hassan Adams, or is that like Jerry West shooting that jump? A rotation, beautiful, nothing but net on the shot. Uh, Jerry West or Michael Jordan, I don't know which one it is with the tongue. <laughs> and then the defense right there, Chris Rogers from behind gets the track. And then watch this little hesitation off the dribble by Shakur. But, uh, uh, pass, no, I've been to the basket, left hand layup. That's a beautiful play in transition by Mustafa, the chosen one, Shakur. And beautifully articulated by you. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, we send Keyshawn Johnson to Cincinnati to find out how the Bengals have gone from laughing stock to playoff contender in three months. Plus, our Howie Long talks to the Colts to see if this is the year that Peyton Manning and Indianapolis make a run at the Super Bowl. It's all on the Ford F-150 Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 o'clock Pacific on Fox. Marcus, you and I felt yesterday when we watched practice that this was going to be a terrific game, and we have not been disappointed. Yeah, I mean, both teams shooting lights out from long range, or both teams making big play after big play. Now, the key for Marquette will be breaking this pressure and Travis Diener, how much he has left in the tank. We talked about wearing him down at the start of the game. Rodgers stays on Diener, and Marquette turns it over. They're handling the pressure. Marquette doesn't do it. Iguodala on the drive. There is a foul call. It will go against the Golden Eagles. You got some confusion, some disagreement going on inside between Sanders, Diener, Novak, Mason. Well, they're getting it squared away. And, and Andre Godala, how about him? Nice job on the penetration. And watch him just find the contact. Legs, arms, everything. Just, just like a heat-seeking missile. Looking for bodies to, to bang into to get to the free throw line. And Marcus, now Scott Merritt and Steve Novak each have four fouls. So Novak will take a seat with Scott Merritt, and they have to go a little younger. Yeah, and Novak's absence probably hurts you a little bit more the way he was shooting the basketball in this game. I mean, Merritt was struggling a bit offensively. Novak on fire from the outside. Arizona has come back from 15 down in this half to claim a two-point lead at 62 to 60. Channing Fry says not this time. Basketball presented by Kia Sarah. Arizona was down 15. Now they have come to because of great defense. And Channing Fry got to get it started right there. Just get that out of my cramp. Channing Fry, the 
Chris Rogers from the back and then watch the freshman little ball fake there on the pass. Left-handed finish inside. Arizona getting it done with interior defense inside. Lute Olsen, his coaching staff, has got to be awful happy. But we told our viewers to mark down when Scott Merritt picked up his fourth foul and had to leave. Marquette was up 13. Now they're down two. Yes, they do miss Scott Merritt. And now with four fouls, he comes back in the game with 7.48 left. Will Merritt defend Channing Frye? And if he does, Lute Olsen will attack. Well, that is a good question. I mean, you know, what you pick your poison, put him on Fry, put him on Adams. Full court pressure. Townsend to Mason. Townsend is foul. That's how you got to take it to the basket. That's how you attack full court pressure. Get it to the middle. Arizona commits three players around the free throw line, their own free throw line. Second foul on Channing Fry. Arizona on a 27 to 10 run the last nine minutes of this game. Not Tom Townsend. Townsend, who only had 12 points in six games, is up the free throw line, and he makes the first quite calmly. But this is a guy who averaged almost six points per game last year. Started all 33 games. The Ty Townsend uh, played a senior year at Mutual High School in Illinois. Played school with Ben Brown, Coach of Canada, and Matt Lodich, who lit up Kansas at, at the pond and knocked the Jayhawks out of net number one, Matt Lodich from Stanford. So that school has produced some tremendous coaches and athletes. And that's all about defense and how well coached this Marquette team is in terms of their help out principles and calming down Iguodala and Hassan Adams. Adams with a great first step. Has it ripped by Townsend. Deaner in the middle of the floor. Nice, nice inside. And Sanders is called inside. Pulled by Channing Fry, I believe. No, it was Hassan Adams. Hassan Adams, third foul. Lute Olsen said, where was the travel? Yeah, nice job by Sanders. I thought to hold his pivot, but pretty effectively inside. But you could see he was kind of looking. Where's Channing? Where's Channing Fry? Is he okay? Not over here? You know, that was a play. He should have caught the ball and, and went up strong the first time to give the young man credit for drawing the foul and getting to the free throw line. And he is a 75% foul shooter for Tom Green. Tom has taken Marquette to the NCAA tournament and back-to-back -back seasons. Last year, went to the Final Four. 26 and 7 two years ago, 27 and 6 last year. Former Tom Izzo assistant has just done an outstanding job getting this program back to prominence. They play like Michigan State. I mean, Tom yep. Izzo is one of the best, and Tom Crean is one of the best. Mustafa Shakur! Lute Olsen told us to watch him when the game's in the line. He has a funny shot, but it goes in when he needs it to. It looks like he's shooting about a 10-pound medicine ball. <laughs> Lute said he doesn't allow any of his coaches to talk about his outside shot, so I won't. But uh, it's, it's unconventional, to say the least, but he can hit it when the pressure's on. Will they work on it in the offseason? Oh, yes, they will. They're not, they're not touching it now. But after the season, they're putting some work on it. It goes in. They kind of shoots it at the top of his jump, uh, almost on the way down. Deaner for three, had to take it with seven in the shot clock, and misses badly. Iguodala to Adams. Fry is underneath. Adams will take it himself, and it's kept in by Fry. Marquette looking for offensive basket interference. None called. Nice job, Hassan, attacking in transition. But you, know, you don't want to get Deaner stuck out there too much with the shot clock winding down and going against Shannon Fry and just kind of force him into long shots. But he's hit one, but you know, don't make a steady diet of that. Shakur rips it out of the hands of Travis Diener. Let's see if this is basket interference. Adams takes it, a little spin to the basket. And let's see if the ball is in the cylinder when it is. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, that's a, that's a goal, Tim. Was not called. Yeah, that's a break for Arizona. We take a two-point lead on that break. But again, we have three Conference USA officials, and they've done a terrific job this afternoon. Curtis Shaw, Stephen Pyatt, and Mike Sanzier. You don't want to get stuck in the corner if you're Travis Dean. That's where Arizona does a great job jumping and trapping. And again, Townsend. Shot clock winding down. Merritt missed it. The save to Townsend. Out of bounds by Adams. That's my grip. Just tough. And so you can see Arizona pick up his intensity right there. I mean, uh, Hassan Adams just beats it up. That's what you call beating it up. And then the primal scream. We saw him take a knee to the thigh yesterday where he had ice on his thigh for 20 minutes in practice. 
But boy, it hasn't affected him. He's leaping. And he's defending Scott Merritt. And, you know, the second best offensive player behind Travis Dina for Mark Cameron, the guy about six inches taller. You know, and Merritt has got to get aggressive and post him up and use that size to his advantage. The bigs have to play big, as we talked about at the start of the game. I mean, of course, Marquette's going to want some, want some time off the clock, kind of short in the game at this stage. Shot clock at five. Dainer fumbles with the basketball. He looks at the clock. He fires at one. And it will not hit the iron, so Arizona will get it on great defense for 35 seconds. And Marquette a little too conservative offensively. I mean, you know, the, the clock is getting around 10, and all of a sudden, Travis Dainer's got it. 28 feet from the basket. You're putting him in a bad way when you do that against this defense of Arizona right now. Marquette with three more turnovers than Arizona after Arizona made six more than the Golden Eagles in the first half. Shakur, wide open, Chris Rogers. But the guy that found it, the freshman out of Philadelphia, Mustafa Shakur, split a couple of the defenders out top, got it to the sea, nice kick out. Arizona's largest lead today. 69-64, and they're wearing Diener down. Merritt misses. Fry rebounded. What a comeback by Arizona. Down 15 in the half. They have come back to take a five-point lead on the Golden Eagles. in the baseline, finding the seam right there. Looks like nowhere to go. Now I'm going to jump through two defenders, draw the contact, and finish the play. Diener picked up his first personal foul. Chris Rogers doing a nice job scoring the basketball, just spotting up, waiting for the delivery from Mustafa Shakur and finishing off the three-point play. So Arizona getting timely offensive contributions from Rogers down here late in the game with the old-fashioned three-point play, and Arizona's gone from 15 down to eight up. Incredible. When they force the opponent to play at their pace, which is frenetic, they'll blow you out. 10 nothing run last two minutes. All right, but you got to do something with Adams, and this is without Stoudemire. Without Stoudemire, but Adams and Merritt, I mean, that's the one matchup in Marquette's favor. Merritt missing the three. Rogers, Adams, watch this! Jack Clark didn't throw it down. That was getting up. This is the guy who took a knee to his thigh that required ice yesterday. And watch how high he gets up. Watch it. <laughs> Tap the shot clock. Come down, Primal yell, it's all good for the Wildcats. Arizona by 10 over Marquette. Let's go to our key Sarah, shot of the day. Hassan Adams with picture perfect vertical liftoff. Wow, I mean, that's just, uh, that's ups, that's hops. That's hot sauce. I remember Lute Olsen when he went to Westchester High School and recruited this young man. He came back and he said, you want to see a guy who will defend and play team basketball? It is Hassan Adams. In the half, 41-23, Arizona has outscored Marquette. And remember, it's 16 and a half mark of this half, second half. Arizona only had 35 points. They've scored 39 points in the last 12 minutes. A 39-14 blitz. And this is where Marquette misses a Dwayne Wade or a second playmaker on the floor with Travis Diener. Diener for free. Oh, he is something else. Travis Diener with 21 points. But there's still a lot of pressure on him to have to come up with big shots almost every single possession. Now Marquette going to extend their pressure. And it's got to be tough for Arizona because Arizona has seven scholarship players, so they don't really get this kind of competition when they work their press bacon best break in practice. And remember, Texas came back on them and made it a very close game in the last three minutes. Yeah, and now Marquette back into a zone. Again, this is with Stoudemire on the sideline. Adams corner. It's the three. This guy has four threes in the game, and that's a career high. 
but Posen on the sideline of Don Adams in front of the Arizona bench. Just a little too long. And this will bring Stoudemire back in the game. You know, and, and he's going to see this maybe in the film. But not, I mean, nice job knocking on the jumper. But you don't need all these shenanigans after you make the shot. Get back on D. All that dancing and kicking feet and all that stuff. You know, save that for after the possession is over with. <laughs> they gave up an easy layup. He's had quite a game with 19 points. He's hit his average. You see what they've done from three-point rank seven of nine. Wow, Stoudemire, seven of eight, is back in the game with Adams, Iguodala, Rogers, and Fry. Now we get a chance to see what Marquette is made of in this kind of a situation. Very tough Wildcat team to shoot the ball incredibly well from the outside. Tough place to play, McHale Center. How much heart do you have? Two on the shot clock. Stoudemire had to force it, and Fry gets it back. And they'll work the clock again as it shows two minutes remaining. And you can't allow offensive rebounds. You, you got the shot. Arizona to take the bad shots you wanted. Five-second violation. Possession arrow still reads. I thought it read Arizona's way, but they're giving it to Marquette. Possession arrow already switched. That's 17 turnovers on Lou Olson's Wildcats. Yeah, good job pressuring the basketball to force a turnover. Uh, I don't think Sotomayor aware that the, the count was... Uh, as deep into the five count as it was. All right, now where do you go? You need a you need a big bucket here. I mean, no back shoot. The three is not a bad play. No back will miss the three. Adams, look how high he got for the rebound. That's why at six four he plays the power forward spot. And it was well executed. He got the double screen for no back. He had a good look, just couldn't knock it down. In Arizona, four and they are outsized by Marquette. And Marquette is plus nine this year out rebounding their opponents. And when you got the leapers and athleticism that the Wildcats have, Hassan Adams just gonna climb the stairs to the top floor over the taller Marcus Jackson. That's over 6'8 Jackson and 6'10 Fry. Yeah, 6'4, going up in there with the big guys and bringing it home. He had 10 rebounds in the last game against Texas. Chris Rogers averaging 12 points per game. He hit a big three to pull them from two up to five up. And, and it's kind of a quiet 12 because you know, the dollar of the dunk, Hassan Adams took some spectacular plays. Channing Fry inside, Stoudemire, the long jumpers. It's kind of a quiet 12 for Rogers, but a very effective 12 points a game this year. to go. Rogers will come out. Shapur, the point guard, comes back in. So it's Shapur, Stoudemire, Adams, Iguodala, and Channing Fry. Novak on the floor with Sanders, Diener, Scott Merritt's playing with four fouls, so is Novak, and Joe Chapman. And Diener's been able to, to get his offense off against Shapur, the freshman, when he's defended it. This time he misses the three. Fry almost went out of the bounds with the basketball. Stoudemire slowly forecourt working the clock. Got a foul, got to stop the clock. And Arizona doing a remarkable job of protecting their home floor. Incredible with a team that really forces you to play at their tempo. Marquette with a 15 point lead with 16 and a half minutes remaining in the ball game, and it's completely reversed itself, and Arizona is up 10 now. Well, that pressure, I mean, it just wears at you. When I say pressure, not only full court, but in their half court defense, Arizona denying the pass, making you have to go back door, making you have to expend a lot of energy. You know, the shot clock winds down, you got to stuck in your hand if you're Diener three or four times, 30 feet in the basket. Yeah, you knock one of those down, but at some point, the percentages are going to catch up with you. This is after losing great leaders in Jason Gardner and Luke Walton and Rick Anderson. Transfers of Dennis Lattimore and Will Bynum. I mean, they could have used Andrew Zahn on the, on the roster right now. Like a 6'8 kid out of Redondo Union who transferred to Biola a couple of years ago. I mean, he'd be a redshirt junior right now. How about one of the top recruits, Indy Eby, going <laughs> declaring for the NBA? Well, I think I'd rather have him than Andrew Zahn, I think. <laughs> Here's Diener. Well, they're trying to get somebody open. Novak has it stripped by Iguodala. Look at Adams and throw it into the stands. Putting on a show. <laughs> Three blocks by a six-four power forward. Admiring his work. 
Go back to Floater. Yeah, float that. <laughs> float on. Hassan, Aquarius, get that out of here. <laughs> Aquarius, where do you come up with these? I gotta get the Marcus Johnson dictionary. <laughs> yeah. Deron Bradley struggles, ripped by Rogers, and Diener misses the bat. Iguodala loses it. Bradley gets it, tipped in finally by Scott Merritt, but too little, too late. Rogers will be fouled. Or is it Sanders? I think Sanders may have held Hassan Adams. But right here, I mean, talk about athleticism. I mean, people say, well, goaltending, but I don't know, man. He, he got up really high, and that shot was uh, caught right at the apex. I thought it was a pretty good play. He got an intentional foul. Now, here's this rule where I'm not really feeling this year, Steve. The intentional foul with the, with the game kind of winding down. When you're in a situation, you've got to stop the clock. you got to foul. Every foul is intentional. In, in this situation, it is. They say, well, we want you to play the ball as opposed to just grabbing a guy, but see how it plays out this season. Say, I love both of these teams' futures this year. Marquette and Conference USA, Arizona, the pick to win the Pac-10 Conference, but watch out for teams like Stanford and Cal and Oregon, USC, UCLA was picked, what, preseason sixth? Yeah. I think they're better than that. We'll have them next week against Michigan State. And I, I, I'll tell you, Arizona State is a load. They beat a very good Temple team, and Rob Evans' team came back so well in that contest. Yeah, you know about Ike Duago, but watch out for Steve Moore from Arizona State. He's another tremendous athlete out of Compton Domingos High School in Los Angeles. It, it, it appears this year we don't have one team that just jumps off the charts like Arizona last year with Walton and Anderson and Jason Gardner. But this year, Marcus, when you take a look at the teams, I mean, it's very even. I think we are going to have some great matchups on Thursdays and Saturdays. I mean, you know, Stanford without Josh Childress, they beat the number one team in the country, Kansas. And not only beat them, but just beat them convincingly as uh, Matt Lotta got off. But you're right, I mean, Cal has had some early, but you know, Ben Braun is a great coach. He's going to get them together. Same thing with Henry Bibby at USC. And uh, you know, and then Trevor Ariza. We're talking about Westchester High School, the freshman at UCLA. During their two exhibition games, he was the best player on the floor. It will be a test for Arizona to win the Pac-10, but at home and playing like this, they'll be tough on any opponent. Corner, Chapman misses the three. On the scramble, it is Merritt. Boy, they just have no luck here in the last 10 minutes of this game. Finding the bottom of the bucket, and Arizona with a 12-point lead with 10 seconds to go. Yeah, a couple of things that happened to Marquette. The quickness of Arizona hurt them. But also, you know, with Arizona, what you have to do, is, with the exception of Stoudemire, is make them knock down outside shots. And tonight with Iguodala, with Hassan Adams, shoot the three-pointer the way he did. Rodgers hit a big three. Uh, Securing a long jump shot late in the game. They knocked down the tough outside shots. So a host of changes for Arizona with Stoudemire at the free throw line. He was the star in their comeback. 25 points. Then he picked up his fourth foul. And Chris Rogers came off the bench and just played just as well. Defending Diener, hitting a couple of big shots. And Arizona unloads the bench. Jason Rainey coming in, Bill Torres. But I, mean, I love what Luke does. He schedules tough competition. Get his guys ready. Not only tough competition, but a variety of different styles to play against. Uh, you know, Florida, St. Louis, half court team, Texas. Kind of like to push it up and get it up and down the floor. Stoudemire finishes the game with 27 markets. 20 more for Hassan Adams. 11 for Iguodala and Channing Fry, And just relentless defense against Marquette. Novak is fouled and puts it in somehow with 3.5 left. Well, he's already set a personal best with, what is it now, his seventh three-pointer in the game or six? Six three-pointers. That's a new Novak best. We talked about a good test for Marquette, too, to come into McHale and play as well as they played for 30 minutes or so <laughs> before things became unglued. But Tom Crean's team will suffer their first loss of the season. The free throw is good by Novak, the inbound to Phil Torres, and he will just let the clock run out. 
Arizona runs the record to four and one. Marquette loses for the first time this year. They are six and one. Adams, Stoudemire combined for 47 points. What about this Arizona team? Well, you know, Arizona, 33 points at halftime. They average 85 a game. I'm like, there's no way they're going to get their average this game. But then that blitz free with about 13 minutes to go. The defense, the outside shooting, the constant pressure. Uh, just a terrific, terrific win for the Wildcats and a good test because Marquette gave them all they could handle for about 30-plus minutes in this game. And reminder that most of you will be seeing UNLV against number 13 Stanford that at Maples Pavilion in Stanford, California for most of our regions. Again, Arizona with an impressive win. A young team down 15 with 16 and a half left. They wind up winning by 10 points, 85 to 75. How about Lute Olson and the job he has done? Lose it. it seems like he just reloads every year. I mean, don't feel sorry for Lute. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Lute Olson is a terrific coach that makes the most of his talent. He's playing small ball, but playing it as well as you'll see it played ever. I mean, Hassan Adams at the 4-6.